I am so excited to introduce Neutralite. This company has been around for 80 plus years. They were green before green was even a thing. They have the world's number one kids and adults vitamins and kids and adults probiotics. This company uses the power of plants from seed to product to nourish and support you and your family's immune systems so you can have fun and enjoy living life together. You know, personal testimony, I had allergies for years and couldn't even be in the room with dust or cats. And the only thing I've changed since then were my vitamins and supplements. They truly cleaned out my system. And now I have three cats. Don't spend another penny on low quality vitamins that invest more in advertisement than the product. Arm yourself with Neutralite vitamins and probiotics, and they have so many more things that will keep you and your family happy and healthy. Also, you can earn points towards cash with every purchase, and with purchases over $99, there's free shipping. Stop losing sleep and time with your family and get back to life with Neutralite. The link is in the show notes. Welcome back to the Homeschool Advantage Podcast. I'm your host, Bex Buzzy. And today's guest is James Hame, founder and vice chairman of Lit Conversation. James focuses on people, especially the youth, helping them foster connections. James actually attests his success to the upbringing he had in New York City, where he was able to connect with those who were older than him, in different industries than him, thus creating a network that was able to inspire him. So he created Lit Conversations because of this realization that kids just need connection now more than ever. In this episode, we talk about how connections with professionals and learning about professional world help students find motivation to be successful after school and how lit conversations can truly support and bolster homeschooling and it can be an effective way to help students explore their passion areas also how teens and tweens benefit from the opportunities to talk to people who are in their desired career path to find the inspiration and to pursue their passions So go grab your coffee, go grab your tea and a pen and paper because you're not going to want to miss what James has to say. Let's get into the podcast. Today's guest is James Hame, founder of Lit Conversations. James, say hello to our guests and tell me, what is one misconception you feel most have about homeschooling? Hey, Bexy, it's wonderful to be here. I think that to answer your question about what is the biggest misconception about homeschooling, I think that it's the value of being able to explore what is your passion. And for students, at least what I've seen with my charity is that when they're connected to their passion, then they can connect to everything else because everything fuels their passion. We had a student who wanted to be an athlete and as a result was not paying attention to, you know, their math homework or doing well in the exams. And we were able to introduce them to somebody who was both an athlete and an accountant. And that one person inspired them to realize that, oh my gosh, connecting everything in my life is how I succeed and how I find happiness. And that student is now doing very well. That's powerful. So that came through Lit Conversations? Yeah, that came through Lit Conversations. Tell us about Lit Conversations, because I I remember on that conversation, I literally was just so excited after we finished talking. I was (laughs) like, I think I'm lit right now. So tell our listeners, what is Lit Conversations and how did you get it started? Yeah, thank you very much for that question. And by the way, we are growing Lit Conversations. We're looking for volunteers. We're also looking for board members. So we are definitely open to more help and more team members. In terms of Lit Conversations, so I started that organization at the beginning of the pandemic. And I started it because at first, you know, we're all thinking about ourselves. How does this affect me? And I was able to put my ego aside and think about 
potentially what it's like to be a child in middle school and high school and to not be able to really connect with people. At least it's harder than it was before. When I was in high school, I had a unique opportunity to meet a bunch of people. I was going to school downtown in the city, New York City. And I realized that looking back, that I think set me up for success because I learned how to socialize. I learned how to connect with people who were older than me, who were in different industries than me. And I was able to basically create a network that was able to inspire me to push myself. And so I created Lit Conversations because I realized kids need connection now more than ever. And that is exactly what we do with Lit Conversations. We take young professionals, people early into their careers, people who've maybe changed jobs and they're at the beginning of a new career, and we introduce them to students. That way, those students can practice those key conversation skills, practice how to socialize in the professional and in the workplace setting, and also how to find inspiration. Because you can find heroes. They're alive. They're not necessarily in the storybooks. You can meet them. They're in your life. And if you're able to find somebody who you can look up to, who could be a mentor to you, that is just such a huge help and an advantage. And we want to give that to students in the classroom and out of the classroom, to all students. Wow. What birthed something like this? Because this is a pretty amazing thing that you're doing, like this lit conversations, this connection that you're making between you know, professionals and students. How did this idea come? How did it birth from what it is now? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I, I do entrepreneurship. I start businesses and organizations. And one of the things that I learned is that you can come into any place with a bright idea, but ultimately what matters is how you communicate with others. So when I knew that I wanted to help schools, I was thinking, how could I help? I'm somebody who sometimes is a motivational speaker. I could speak at the school. I could talk to the students. I was just looking for ways to help. But then when I actually spoke with teachers and principals and asked them, you know, what do you actually need? How can I help your students? That's when they opened my eyes to the need for students to connect with experts and people who are in industry doing very cool, exciting, and cutting-edge things. And they were asking me to be their first speaker. And I realized, but I know so many people like me in my network. What if we could make this a recurring thing? It's not just me talking one time. What if we could create a program? And so it's really through community, partnerships, communication. You know, we have lots of volunteers. Everybody has contributed to the gradual story that is lit today. Wow. I love that. Connecting the professional world with students <laughs> and then bringing them together. That's really powerful. And I love the fact that you did the charge. You went for it and here it is. So what ages do you tend to focus on? Like, what are the ages? Is it any age or do you have like a certain specific like age group that you guys work with mainly? Yeah, that's a really great question. So what are the ages that we really focus on? I'd say at the moment, we've done our best work with kids between the ages of 13 and 18. Those are years where they're still impressionable, where, you know, if, if we can inspire that kid, find them someone who they can look up to, that positions them really well to get into college, do well in college, have a great career. But that said, we are always looking for more advice and communication from parents, teachers, especially those of you who are homeschooling, because you're already familiar with what your child needs. If we can learn more, then we can do better. Wow. Humility. That's awesome. I love that. And honestly, as an entrepreneur, you know, you're actually going out there and asking those questions and you're doing your due diligence and, you know, just getting almost, it's almost like you're polling, you know, finding out like, okay, so what, where is the mm -hmm. need and everything? And yeah, that's what actually, people need? yeah, because What's that? we can make assumptions and we can provide students with information that they don't need necessarily. Right, right. And that's what an entrepreneur does. They are solution seekers. They find a need and then they, you know, find a solution for it. And I love that. Yeah, I know it is. It's true. Totally um, right. <laughs> also, like, do you have an opportunity for kids to become entrepreneurs too, like to connect up other entrepreneurs in lit conversations? Yeah, that's a really good question. Do we have opportunities to help students with entrepreneurship? I'd say that the answer is yes. In the programming that we provide, there's definitely a lot of initiative that comes from the students. We really put them in front of people without too much of an agenda or a structure. And what we do is we actually prepare the students with their bio. And we ask the students to come prepared with questions. And that can be very hard. And we have some students who don't ask questions and we call on those students to inspire them. But if a student wants to be involved in entrepreneurship, then we expect them to express that. And if they do, then, you know, they ask to, yeah, be connected with other 
potential mentors. And there's no reason for us to say no to that. As long as we have parent permission. <laughs> yeah. So you give kids the opportunity to have a voice and to start asking questions and basically start thinking for themselves and start advocating for themselves. At least that's what it sounds like to me. You're not just allowing them to be passive. It's like, hey, what do you want? Let's write this down. Let's get down oh, what it is 100%. that you're looking for. A hundred percent. Lit Conversations is not about the content. We are not here to give presentations or to share information. We are here to answer questions. And sometimes the questions get very technical and we love those questions, but sometimes the questions are very simple. Like, do you enjoy who you work with or how stressful do you feel while you're working there? What was your most exciting day on the job? You know, these are the questions that the students are asking us. They're questions about fulfillment. Um, do you enjoy your life? And what's interesting to us is that we find that a lot of students are actually worried about what happens to them after school. And maybe that's not too surprising, but that anxiety actually causes them to perform poorly in class because they feel like there's no hope for them in some extreme cases. But in other cases, they just feel like, why am I excited to learn when, you know, I'm not following the career of my dreams? We had another student who really wanted to be a doctor and felt that she could not get a good grade and everyone in her life who was in medicine was stressed. So, you know, she was conflicted. She didn't know if she wanted to follow her dream. And we were able to introduce her to a doctor who had failed <laughs> largely through school, but then finally decided that, you know what, this is my passion, though. Found her job, loves it, shared that experience with the student. And now that student's one of the top performers in her class. Wow. I have another question. So in your program, does a kid have to stay with one mentor or are they able to speak to a multiple of different people? and ask these questions to different people? Yeah, that's a really good question. The way that our program is structured is we bring in one person to a class and we do that once a month. That's our typical cadence. And it's up to the students to be as involved as they want to be. Normally, I don't really call them mentors per se. I feel that the mentor relationship is really for the students to set outside of the program. If, if they find that there's like a fit with the person that they're speaking with, you know, they can talk to them and ask if they can be mentored. But we try to avoid the one-on-one -on -one model, at least within our framework, because sure. we want the students who come into our programs to see how the other students are engaging. That way they learn how to do this. Because it's one thing to have someone like me or a teacher say, hey, we need to ask questions, versus seeing other students doing it and feeling the happiness that they're feeling, the curiosity, the excitement. You know, when you see that, you want to copy that, right? We get every student to participate, and it's amazing. A lot of teachers have looked at our program and said, I don't know how you did that. <laughs> Honestly, and for us, we really think it's the students are modeling each other. And it's the pressure dynamics for sure. Because when the dynamics in the class starts dictating what to do, it becomes a culture. And when you get what you want to build as a teacher, you want to build culture in your class. In my classroom, the culture is to ask questions when you you know, you want to know information. The culture is to be engaged. So I love that because the dynamics tend to drive the culture in the class. They really do. So it's like really playing to like to that in class is really key. So mm -hmm. you work mainly with schools or like co-ops and things like that. How does it work if someone wanted to connect up with you? Like what would be like the next steps? Yeah, of course. So we did start in the school system. It was just easier for us because, you know, they had classrooms of kids already available. But that said, we are now on Eventbrite. This year, we have started our first international program where all you need is to register and jump in on Zoom. And it's actually our goal to make sure that you are meeting different students from around the world in your class. You know, you don't necessarily get a chance to really talk to them one on one, but just the opportunity to get exposed to what they're curious about. Sometimes maybe you do make a friend. And so we have this new program now where, you know, people are coming in from the homeschooling sector from public schools, private schools, charter schools, you name it. Our classes are mixed now too, in terms of you know how old or young the students are and, and all that. That's really cool. I know for me, I wanted to piggyback on something that you had said before. A lot of times when students are leaving or in their upper level grades, and they're about to either be graduating in the next year or two, a couple of things happen because of the unknown, they will either begin to sabotage their grade because they're almost afraid to graduate. So it's like they'll almost sabotage their learning 
So that way they can stay a little longer. I know I did that in college. I actually sabotaged myself because I was, oh my gosh, if I leave college, what happens to me? Like, where do I go? I didn't have the opportunity to have a conversation with a person in the industry, right? And yeah. once I finally did do that, I had to do like externships and internships for what I was studying. Mm-hmm. That was when I was able to actually feel confident and graduate. But I'll be honest, I kept myself back. I was just like, I don't even know what's out there. Like I feel safer in school. Like I just mm-hmm. feel safe here. So I, I'll just keep going back. So I kept going back for my master's. I was like, I'll go back for my PhD. I'll just stay here until I, you know, until I figure it out. But how awesome is it if they're able to connect with a person in the industry at a younger age and just get those questions answered and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that that like nebulous, not knowing what's happening after I graduate, whether it's high school or college is kind of gone. They have like a blueprint, at least to know ah, I could potentially do this. So that's really awesome that you're doing that. So as we're wrapping this up, what's the call to action? Where can they connect with you? And maybe even can they contact you? Can they connect with you personally? Yeah, of like- course. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah, we uh, we have an email that's easy to reach, info at litconversations.org. You can also visit our website. If you go to litconversations.org slash programs, then you'll be able to find that Eventbrite link and you'll be able to sign up. Yeah, that's the main information. <laughs> awesome. And I will put all of those links in your show notes so that parents can just click and go. Make it super easy. So that's as we're great. wrapping up, what is one takeaway you want to leave with parents today as they walk away from our conversation? Yeah, of course. That takeaway is that humans are afraid of what they don't know. Mm. And if you have children and your children are learning about what they want in life, it's important to help them find out what they don't know. It's important because it helps them find the career of their choice, but also their friends. It's really the most important thing to their success. And if it is not addressed, like if you're not able to help your kid get exposure, then it can just be very hard for them to find motivation, even for what they already like. Because the thing is, if they're learning more things about what they like, that's so inspiring. And then what you can do is you can put some challenges in front of them, right, in front of your child, and now they have motivation. And that's how you can get a student to, you know, do difficult things sometimes, like homework assignments, exams. Uh, We all know that it's important to reward them. But if you get them excited about their dream, there's nothing that will make them more excited. I love it. Thank you so much, James, for coming on and just sharing, you know, your story, your experience, your testimonies. It's been really awesome having you on today. Thank you so much. Thank you, Bexy. If you love the conversations we're having here on the Homeschool Advantage podcast, follow or subscribe our podcast to stay in the loop and never miss this amazing content. And please highly consider taking a minute to leave a positive rating and review to help others like you discover this show. See you next time.